Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior, they lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, 
the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 126. Let us say this together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then he said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the land. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carry the seed will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have, be I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own order that comes from law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached this goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Jesus Christ had made me his own. <coughs> Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God and Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is Fair as Lord Jesus, and the words are in the bulletin, but we are using a more traditional tune that you will probably like.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Good morning. Extravagance, effusiveness, exuberance. These aren't ideas we usually associate with Lent, especially as we in the approach to Jesus' crucifixion. Yet here we are this week reading the story of Mary anointing Jesus' feet. What a powerful story. As I reflected this week on the gospel and what I might say about it, I found myself deeply connecting with Mary and the grand gesture of her love toward Jesus. This is a woman whose brother had died just a few days before. Even though we didn't get to it in this year's lectionary, you're probably all familiar with the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So this story kind of picks up where that story ends, with Jesus, Mary, and Martha, and a very alive Lazarus sitting in Mary and Martha's home eating dinner. I can't imagine the atmosphere. What was everybody talking about? I probably have a bunch of questions for Lazarus. Did you see a light? Who was waiting for you? Did you see God? I mean, how do you just sit around the table with Jesus waiting for dinner after being for, in a tomb for four days? You know what I mean? And what about Mary? She had laid her brother to rest in a tomb. She walked with her friend Jesus as he told Lazarus to get up. And here they all were. And she had to cook dinner, which in itself is super relatable as a mom. No matter what that day has brought, there's always dinner to cook. Anyway, here they all were. And I wonder if Lazarus had taken a bath or a shower or something, because, well, let's face it, he probably smelled really bad after four days. And Mary, grateful that her brother was alive again, approaches Jesus with a bottle of expensive and fragrant oil and starts to wash his feet with it. Not only that, but after she finishes, she wipes his feet with her hair. Let's just think about that for a minute. Do you have a visual? Her brother is alive. Jesus is sitting in the living room. His feet are dusty. And she thanks him 
by washing his feet with oil that is, a, that is worth a year's wages for the average laborer. And she dries them with her hair, which she has, by the way, scandalously let down for the occasion. At first read, the story sounds odd, even a little funny. But I want to get past that and really listen to what's going on here. Mary's dearest friend, Jesus, has raised her brother from the dead. She's overcome with emotion, both for the miraculous resurrection of her brother and for her love of Jesus. She's a woman with few rights and very little to call her own. What she's doing with such an expensive bottle of oil, I couldn't possibly know. But she decides that she's going to use it to comfort and soothe the one who has comforted and soothed her in her grief. She has chosen to turn her gratitude into love and action. Showing her love for Jesus in this way was Mary's love language. Her servant approach to loving her teacher, her Lord, the Messiah, her way of showing her true feelings. And how many of us do the very same thing? How many of us turn our overwhelming love into action? We show our love for each other in all kinds of ways, sometimes extravagantly and sometimes in the mundane. We make sure we're the first to wake in the morning so that we can be out of the shower before someone else needs it. We wake early to make sure the coffee pot has water and that breakfast is ready so that mornings run smoothly for our loved ones. We meal plan and we pack lunches. We check the oil in the car before our loved ones go on long trips. There are just so many ways that we, sh sh we show that we care about each other. And these become our love language. We love each other in these ways because Jesus first loved us. In fact, he loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And he alludes to it in this gospel story. After Judas admonishes Mary for what he thinks is her careless use of such expensive oil, Jesus tells him that the poor will always be with them, but that he will not be with them much longer. Mary's lavish devotion in today's gospel contrasts with Judas's critical stinginess. This passage gives us permission, so to speak, to honor Jesus in extravagant ways, but it also reminds us to honor him in the ways that only we can. It embraces affection as part of a devotion to Jesus that is nothing less than the costly, precious gift of one's whole self down to the very last strand of hair. And I suppose that's the final message that I received from this week's gospel. You see, the fact of the matter is that none of us really knows how much time we have left. We're really never guaranteed tomorrow. So why not love extravagantly? Why not spoil the people we love with attention while we can? Why not love so hard that others wonder what we're up to? We can live in fear about how long we might have left, or we can live in gratitude for the resurrection. Because it's not just Lazarus who's been raised from the dead. We all have been. This is the promise of baptism, and again at the end of life. Death does not speak the final word. Love does. We've all experienced a resurrection. So let's live like it. Forget about the naysayers. Hold back nothing. Live like Lazarus and love 
like Mary. Amen. I invite you to stand and affirm your faith in our Lord and his church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life. True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this gathering. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It 
is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, God Heavenly God, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated for just a moment. Worship continues at Middleham and St. Peter's Parish every Wednesday at 9 a.m. at St. Peter's Chapel on Solomon's Island for Eucharist and Prayers for Healing. Uh, and then we are drawing towards the close of the season of Lent and into Holy Week. So next Sunday, we'll be back in here at Smith Hall for one combined service at 9.30 a.m. for Palm Sunday. So we'll have our blessing of palms to begin the celebrations of Holy Week. Um, Wednesday, we'll have our, our service as usual at St. Peter's in the morning during Holy Week. And also during Lent, both this week and next week, we'll have our book study at St. Peter's. That's five, uh, sorry, here. Smith Hall on Wednesday evening, 5.30 p.m. We're reading Walk in Love, Episcopal Beliefs and Practices. So we hope you'll join us for that study. Uh, and then in Holy Week, which again is next week, after Palm Sunday, um, we'll be in here for Maundy Thursday at 6 p.m. for Eucharist. Uh, Good Friday, which is Friday, April 15th, if my dates are right in my head. Um, Smile, our uh, food pantry and clothes closet over here, which is an ecumenical ministry of the county, has a service of Stations of the Cross, which begins at St. Peter's. We'll gather at 10.45 a.m. on Good Friday. Here will be at 6 p.m. for Stations of the Cross here in Smith Hall. Father Skip will be leading that. Our Easter Vigil will begin back here at our fire pit at 7 p.m. on uh, the evening before Easter. And then we'll come in here for the rest of that service. So that's a gathering back there at 7 p.m. and then processing in here. And then Easter Sunday will be at all three places. So St. Peter's, 815. Uh, here at 9.30 and Middleham at 11.15. Now, there's no quiz on that because you probably can't remember it, and neither can I. I'm, I'm praying that I got all that right. But it all goes out in the weekly, okay? So that will be in your weekly newsletter, uh, or contact the office if you have any questions about that. Just as a reminder, um, especially during the season of Lent, um, the Sacrament of Reconciliation or Confession is always available. That's part of what we do in the Episcopal Church. Um, some of us make a regular practice of it. I always encourage that, and I try to do that myself. If you're interested in that or want to know more about that, it's very helpful for some people, though it's not required. Uh, just contact the office and ask to speak with me, and we can set that up in some way that's helpful for you. Any other uh, announcements at this time? Yes, ma'am. Great. <coughs> Great, thank you. Yes, Carl. Also, as far as health ministry, um, we've only had 12 people to the next mile from the Walton to Jerusalem, so we're way, way behind.
Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're still swimming, he says. Okay. Most of the time I feel like I'm barely keeping my head above the water. We invite you to stand for our closing hymn. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.